Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. The i5 13600K is the new budget CPU king with 14 cores and 20 threads for $320. Today, we're going to do a PC build guide showcasing a balanced build around this CPU. This PC is primarily focused on gaming. However, it will also handle content creation, business work, multitasking, and more. That is not, however, the focus here gaming is. The goal is to build a PC that will provide four years of gaming performance at 1440p for a reasonable price. This is the first video in a series on this build. You'll find a playlist linked in the video description below that will be added to over time as we do further content on this PC. The second video is planned to be a why vlog, a deep dive into every part, what the alternative options are and why we picked what is here versus those and why you might choose something else. The third video is going to be a DDR4 versus DDR5 video using reasonable levels of hardware to compare the two RAM speeds. The fourth video is going to be a real-world gaming performance review at detail settings and resolutions that are appropriate for this hardware. And beyond that, perhaps we'll find something new to cover in the future for upgrades down the line. Today's video is all about the parts themselves and specifically why they made sense for this build without talking too much about the alternatives, which is what part two is for. Without further ado, please grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into it. This video is not a review of the CPU itself. We have done a full launch review on that. It will be linked in the video description below if you have not seen that. The TLDR version is that if you have $300 to spend on a CPU and you are looking for a new platform to build on, this is what you should be buying this generation. Everything in this build will be linked in the video description below. Those are affiliate links. Using those links when shopping is a great way to proactively support your favorite creators. Our links will take you to our own dedicated store selection page. You can pick from Amazon, Newegg, b and Best Buy, and more. If one store is sold out, check another one. In addition, I want to thank Intel for sponsoring this video series. Their support has enabled me to return to a build guide series with a deeper dive into a single PC build, which I honestly haven't done in a while. Please do me a favor and click the sponsored link in the video description below. It lets Intel know that you care enough to see more content like this. As noted at the start of this video, the goal here is to provide solid 1440p gaming performance for a reasonable price. To add to that, it is also important, in my opinion, to build a PC that's actually nice to build and to use, which means we will not be using the cheapest case and the cheapest power supply possible because those type of shortcuts often lead to subpar long-term experiences. The budget for this PC today is $2,000, which does not include a monitor, mouse, or keyboard. Those items are better picked out on their own. However, for the purposes of this build, I'm assuming that you have a 1440p 144Hz monitor, either in standard or ultra-wide configuration, as those can both be now purchased for $200 to $300. So for this level of PC, there is no longer any reason to use 1080p or a 60Hz monitor. If you still are, please take this opportunity to upgrade that as well. Some of you may very well be saying, hold on, you can build an i5-13600K gaming PC for way less than $2,000. That's crazy. Well, you're not wrong. You can, in fact, build an i5-13600K gaming PC for under $1,000. However, it then becomes something else entirely. What? I love garbage. You see a lot of cheap pre-built computers doing this. They put a great CPU in, and the rest of the system is junk. People think they're getting a nice PC, but they really aren't. Having said that, quality builds and parts aren't for everybody. So if you'd like to see a cheaper version of this build at a lower price point, leave a comment below with your ideal price target, and maybe I'll follow this up with another video guide at a lower price point if there are enough comments requesting it. Starting our build off today with this CPU, we have the Intel i5-13600K, a lovely CPU with six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. It runs at five gigahertz out of the box, and while it can be overclocked, the gains are minor versus the effort and the risk. We will be doing all of our benchmarking at stock clock speeds. 
If you watched our original review on this CPU, you will know that we gave it a very rare Tech Deals Editor's Choice Award. For $300-ish, you get amazing performance for the money. It is worth noting that this is faster than the i9-10900K was, and that only launched a few years ago for a much higher price point. Intel's really bringing the value here. This CPU will install in 600 or 700 series Intel boards, and it will work with either DDR4 or DDR5 RAM. It does not include a cooler in the box. The K version is unlocked, and it has an integrated graphics chip built in. The KF version is unlocked and does not. For $10 to $20 more, in my opinion, get the K version, even if you don't think you'll use the iGPU. At some point, you may be glad it's there. The 13600K provides six very fast cores for your primary games to use, leaving eight efficiency cores to handle background tasks, Windows updates, and a variety of things. It's a far superior solution to just having six cores, such as in the Ryzen 5 7600X. One comment that is sure to be down in the comment section below is, for a $2,000 build, why not put in an i7 or an i9 instead of the i5? That will be addressed in detail in part two. Rest assured, I will have lots to say. But the short version is, sure, if you've got the money and you want a little bit more performance, upgrading is never a bad idea. The cooler we'll be installing is the Scythe Fuma 2 Rev B, which includes updated support for LGA 1700 sockets out of the box. I have several of these. It is such a good value for the money, and it's all an i5 needs. Frankly, it's all an i7 needs. If you're going the i9, you want a larger cooler. It does run cool and quiet. It installs in minutes. Seriously, it is one of the easiest coolers to install. And it includes a low profile fan to avoid blocking your RAM slots. Very nice. The motherboard choice is always very personal. Again, I will have much to say in the next video, discussion of 600 versus 700 series and a variety of other things. But for now, we have the Gigabyte Z690 Aero G DDR4 version for $259. This is a full-featured board with all you need for a quality $2,000 build for years to come. This board accepts DDR4 RAM. It includes four M.2 slots, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax, that's a mouthful, dual 20 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2 2x2 Type-C ports, that's another mouthful, Realtek ALC 4080 audio, or 4080 audio if you prefer, which is essentially a USB version of ALC 1220 audio, doesn't really matter, but it's very nice, and six SATA ports. It is extremely fully featured for $250. Most importantly, it includes BIOS flashback, so you do not need to worry if your board has a new enough BIOS to support the 13th gen CPUs. You can flash your BIOS to the newest version without a supported CPU installed. Next, we need some system RAM, and this is going to be a choice I imagine more than one of you is going to disagree with. Please do so in the comment section. It boosts engagement. 64 gigabytes of DDR4-3600 CL18 for $160 provides enough RAM for today and tomorrow, so you never again have to think about it. The idea of leaving your other game running while you open another game to play is not the kind of thing that I think a lot of people think of. In fact, I've seen a lot of posts from people who still say they still close everything on their machine because their mindset is like 10 or 15 years ago, back when we had one or two gigs of RAM. And if you didn't close everything, shut everything down, get everything out of the task tray, then your computer ran like crap. Mm -hmm. 64 gigabytes provides enough to allow you to keep everything open, have background services running, and accommodate the next generation of games with zero worry that you'll run short. Yes, 32 gigabytes is enough for a lot of people today. But why have enough when for $80, you can have plenty? The 64 gigabytes is a reflection of the idea that you shouldn't settle for good enough. Rather, you should ask for enough that I don't have to care. Life is good, but it can be better. Storage is next, and I've included two drives in this build because honestly, one drive is not enough for most people, in my opinion. At least not for a $2,000 gaming PC anyway. 
Our boot drive is a super premium 2 terabyte Samsung 980 Pro Gen 4 NVMe drive that will provide exceptional performance for Windows and your core games. For all but the most budget of systems, I now consider 2 terabytes to be the minimum size for a boot drive for new builds given current prices. Before you all rush to the comments and say, you don't need 2 terabytes for a boot drive in 2022, my response would be, Generally, no, you don't, except for extremely premium users, but this is supposed to be a four-year PC. In 2025 and 2026, is that one terabyte statement still going to be true? This is all about forward-looking, and if you want this machine to cover you for the next four years, especially when Windows 12 launches, then maybe you just might want to step it up a notch more than you actually need today. Our secondary game drive is an ultra-budget 4TB 11 JS600 SATA SSD for $200. This is the exact opposite of the 980 Pro. It is a QLC DRAMless drive that frankly I wouldn't use to boot an i5-2400, but it's perfectly serviceable for a secondary Steam game drive. I have, as you can see here, the 2TB version of this drive, and it's fine if nothing remarkable. We need a case to put all of this in. Cases can be a highly personal choice. There are hundreds, if not thousands of options to pick from, so anything I put here is but one of many choices. I have selected the Cooler Master H500 ARGB mid-tower case for $139 for this build. It is here because it provides excellent airflow with dual 200mm fans up front, a large exhaust on the top, and a fan in the rear. It also provides a lovely carrying handle up top, along with all the expected front panel ports and buttons. It is wide enough to accommodate taller tower CPU coolers, GPUs, and still provides some clearance from the glass side panel. Now I have built in this case before, this one here specifically. I have nothing but nice things to say about its cable management, airflow, and ease of use. For $139, I really like this case. Finally, that leaves the power supply, an often forgotten about piece of kit that your PC frankly just won't turn on without. First try. The options here are almost as broad as the case choice. However, I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy, so we are going to step this up with a lovely Superflower Leadex 6 Platinum Pro 1000 watt power supply. Yes, that's a mouthful. And yes, that's not actually what's in front of me because I don't have one. This is the gold 850 watt power supply. Superflower is one of the primary OEMs that actually makes power supplies. In fact, they make power supplies for other companies. And I've bought them in the past, used them in the past, and would highly recommend them. The 1000 watts will provide you with enough power for this machine today and future upgrades, including to a 4090. Fully modular in design, it is short enough, 150 millimeters long, very nice, to make cable management inside the case easy, and of course, powerful enough for anything you might want to plug into it. It will also be silent with a fluid dynamic bearing fan, fully modular cables, and a 10-year warranty. Funny name, serious power supply. What a lovely PC build. There's just one more thing to add. Perhaps some of you noticed, perhaps some of you are busy playing the tweet book game on your phone while I speak. That's okay. Watching the video twice is great for engagement. We need a dedicated graphics card to round out our gaming PC. For an i5 based build, in general, exceptions exist, a mid-level GPU makes the most sense. In this case, we are going with the RTX 3070 from Nvidia due to its universal support and solid performance. You can now buy one brand new today for $499. So that's awesome. It only took two years, but they are finally, really, 100% legit selling for MSRP, new in the box. If you are okay with a used card, you can find RTX 3070 cards on eBay for $380 at the time of filming. In my opinion, that is not enough of a discount considering most of those are ex-crypto mining GPUs that may have been run in a hot, unloved environment for two years, 24-7. It's possible you'll find a gem that was well cared for, but that is impossible to tell from an eBay listing. 
If the idea of paying NVIDIA's 2020 MSRP for an 8GB graphics card gives you heartburn, consider an alternative. Intel recently launched the ARC A770 for $349. This card offers competitive performance in modern games and 16GB of VRAM, which is honestly almost overkill for the performance the card has, but it is nice to have for the future. We recently did a full review of the A770, and that video will be linked in the video description below. For those of you who didn't watch it or perhaps forgot, the TLDR is that this card is very competitive with NVIDIA and AMD in DirectX 12 and Vulkan games. It is great to see competition and another option besides Team Red and Team Green. Rest assured, I will cover a much wider range of possible GPUs and usage scenarios in part two. That almost could be a video all by itself. Who knows? Maybe I'll do just that. Let me know in the comments what you think is the best GPU to pair with the i5-13600K. Overall, this is a lovely build featuring quality parts that will be both a pleasure to build and a pleasure to own for many years. You can grow and expand this PC in many ways thanks to the room in the case, the quality of the power supply, and the quality of the motherboard, and most importantly, the performance of the CPU. I do look forward to reading your thoughts on this one. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end of this video. Two gold stars for all of you still here. Like, comment, subscribe, and do all of the YouTube things. Links in the video description below are affiliate links. Those support the channel. Check out the link to Intel down below. As I said before, they sponsored this video. Notice there's no other sponsor spot in here. Thanks to their support, I can now bring you a video series on this build, which it's been a while since I've done one. If this goes well, we may be able to follow this up with an i7 and maybe even an i9 build video series, a comparison and some other things. So let me know in the comments what you thought below this. Let me know some of the answers to the questions I asked throughout the video. Again, be sure to check out Intel's link. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see all of you next time.